All right, problems and momentum there. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. So part A, mass of the elephant is given. So velocity is there. Multiply them, you get the momentum. P is the symbol for velocity, and it's, I mean, for momentum, and it's a vector, isn't it? Having the same direction as that of velocity. So momentum and velocity have the same direction. You get 1.50 times 10 to the 4, which is 150,000 kilogram meter per second. I'm sure everybody got that. And B, again, the tranquilizer mass is given PD for dart, okay? PD, momentum of the dart. Mm. Multiply the mass with the velocity. And did you get 24? Yeah. And then you're asked to compare. So that means you take the ratio of the momentum of the elephant to the momentum of the dart. That's what you do. And how do you know which one to put on the top? You look at the sentence. It says, compare the elephant's momentum, isn't it? First, with the momentum of the dart. So that's why that's in the numerator. Divide them. Of course, the units will get canceled. It's a ratio. It will not have any unit. Did anybody get 625? Yes. Okay. I heard one S. What about the others? Yes. Woo! Two, three. Good. And who got the answer for C? I did. You did? Anna, what's the answer? 666. All right. Momentum of the hunter. Multiply the mass of the hunter with his... Velocity, that's all you have to do. 666, six, six. not a good number. Okay. Some of you know why. All right, in the second question, a child drives a bumper car head-on into the side rail, which exerts a force. So that's clearly force, 4,000 Newton on the car for... 0 0.200 seconds, that's time, of course, isn't it? What is the impulse? Force times time. Impulse is the product of force and time. So you've got that in your head. And then you continue reading. You say, find the final velocity of the bumper car. If its initial velocity was 2.80 meter per second, and the car plus driver have a mass of 200 kilogram. OK, so anyway, you got the first part, right? OK, let's, let's do the first part. Impulse. If I didn't tell you the symbol for impulse is caps J. Did I give you the symbol for impulse? It's a capital J with a vector symbol. So impulse is equal to change in momentum. Hey, wait, aren't there two formulas for impulse? Yeah. One is change in momentum. What's the other one? Change in uh, force multiplied by time, isn't it? So you can use both of those. I'm writing both, if you can see that. Look, impulse is change in momentum, or it is force multiplied by time. In this case, I'm using the second one, because the force is given. The time is given. All you got to do is just multiply those two, you get 800 Newton per sec, I mean Newton second. Not Newton per second, Newton second, right? Okay. Now give me the idea to do the second part. Oh, use the change in momentum formula? Okay, so what's the initial momentum or what's the final momentum? Do you know anything? I mean, do you know the... What are you asked to find? Find the? We know the change and we know the final. Yeah, find the final velocity is the question, oh. right? Final velocity. So how do you we find? We know the initial. Oh, the initial velocity is given. That's what I wanted you to spend time on, not in writing. Look. So if the initial velocity is given and the mass is given, don't you know the momentum? I mean, you know the initial momentum, isn't it? 
Come on. 200 times this is the initial momentum. Do you know the final momentum? No. no. Okay. Your plan is good. I'm using this formula now. J is change in momentum. Now change means final takeaway initial, isn't it? That is final momentum minus initial momentum. I've taken the mass common. Is that clear enough? Yeah. So we already got the impulse. 800. So I put that there. The mass is 200. We do not know the final velocity, but we know the initial. Simple. Now I've solved that equation. First step is to divide it by 200 on both sides, which I've done. See, divide both sides by 200. And then you have a minus there, so try to take that to the other side. So this is 4. 800 by 200 is 4. And now add 2.80 to both sides. If you do that, you will get 6.80 meter per second. That is the final velocity. Because the dashboard is padded, it compresses how much when the person hits the dashboard? Come on. That's good. Man, one centimeter is that much, isn't it? How much it moved, you see? But look at the B part. It says calculate the average force on the person if he's stopped by an airbag that compresses how much now? Fifteen. Wow. So the time is increased, the distance is increased. What will happen to the force? It'll become less. It'll become less. Remember what I told you when you if somebody throws a fast ball at you and you don't want it to hurt you, what do you do when you catch it? You pull your hands backwards. What are you doing? Increasing the distance and increasing the time, right? Same thing. That's how airbags help, if you understood. Otherwise, you would have stopped. Hmm? Oh. Small time, big force, broken face, broken nose. But now airbags come up immediately. And you should, if you think about the mechanism when an airbag explodes, it's an act, actual explosion. Did you know that? It's an explosion. And it has 0.1 seconds or less to explode. I mean, what good is it if the airbag opens after you have hit something? What I mean, so you know what I'm trying to say? Look at the timing. It should... You hit, and the airbag should be up before you move. Think about the engineering involved there. Because if it comes up after you hit, what's you? it's going to hurt you more. You know, on top of you being hit, there's an explosion <laughs> in your face. So that's what we're going to compare the force now. You will see how small the force becomes. Well, how do we do it? Give me the idea. Part A, how do you find the force? And you start thinking about all the formulas for force that you know. What are the formulas for force you know? Okay. And then say, is the mass given? Yes. yes. Okay. And then you look at, ah, if I could get the acceleration, I could find the force. It's, that's how you think. And then to find the acceleration, start looking at, is the velocity given? Yeah. Yes. That's the initial velocity. Do you know the final velocity? Yeah. Sure. You know the final velocity? Yeah. You are looking for acceleration. Is anything else given? Yes. The weight. Distance. Distance. The distance. Isn't it given as one centimeter? Yes. Uh, what's the symbol for distance? Delta X. Delta X. But it's in centimeters, right? So you'll have to change it into meters. meters. No, I'm going to show you how to change it, but I'm forming a plan now. And then you say, hey, ah, is there an equation that relates these four? Kinematics? Yes. So you got your plan. Vf squared is Vi squared plus 2A delta x. There is an equation from which you find A, put A back into this, you get the force. That's how you do problems. Make a plan first. And then the second part is the same thing, isn't it? In the second part, the only thing that changed was, somebody tell me. The? So you'll have to use this again, find the new acceleration, put it back there, you find the force. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Come on. Acceleration is given by this equation, Vf squared minus Vi squared by 2, okay, 2d. d there is delta x, okay? Sorry for that. d is the distance, that's delta x, minus 20. I did not, I did not even put the 0. I think you understand, right? Final velocity is 0, isn't it? So it's 0 minus 20, but you don't see the 0 there. Two times the distance. Where did I get that from? What is that? What is that? It's same as it's one centimeter. Correct. One centimeter changed into meter. How do you change? You divide by 100. Mm -hmm. One by 100 is 10 to the negative 2. Okay. So you find the acceleration. It's 2 times 10 to the 4. It has to be a negative. Okay. That's a huge acceleration, or rather deceleration. What do you say? Isn't it a big number? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's why the force is going to be big, because force is mass times acceleration. Well, first I thought of putting the negative out there, but then I said no. Let me put it exactly as it is. Man, that's 1.5 million newtons. I'll be surprised if the nose is not broken. 1.5 million newtons. Because the stopping distance was small. But you go to the second part, do the same thing again. The only thing that changes is the distance, which is now, isn't it 15 centimeter? Yeah, that's why you see it as 0.15 meter. Look at that. Isn't this much smaller than this? Do you see that? That's why the force is going to be smaller. Okay, so that mass multiplied minus 9.98 times 10 to the 4. Wow, look at that. See, 10 to the 6 here, this is almost 10 to the 5 because this is 10, isn't it? So at least the force is reduced 10 times. That is the use of airbags. Too bad if I didn't. All right, the mass of the ship is given. It's 1 times 10 to the 7. Remember, speed is given. It comes to a rest and says calculate the average force using the concept of impulse. Okay, I saw it just now. Maybe I did not. All right, initial velocity, final velocity, distance, looking for time, isn't it? All right. Wow, did the same thing. Isn't this what we did? Displacement is average velocity multiplied by time. Displacement is average velocity. See that? Not just velocity. If it's changing, you can use average velocity. Multiplied by time. And from that, you get the time. You have to be careful in your calculations, of course. And after you get something, you should look at it and say, is this sensible enough? Is that sensible? Well, this one moved for six meters, isn't it? So, and it was moving so slowly, so you know, yes, yeah, 16 seconds makes sense, yeah. I forget the time. Average force multiplied by time is, I put the two formulas for impulse together. That's what I did. Is that okay? This is one equation for impulse. This is the other, right? I put them both together. We got the time as 16, mass is here, final velocity is 0, initial is 0 0.750.
Now, this side gives me, should be negative, yeah. or I, I divide it by 16 and I get, actually it should be negative, isn't it? Yes. The negative 4 shows that it's an opposing force. I have not put the negative here, so you may want to put the negative to show that it's an opposing force. Okay. Any questions on that? Nope. All right, the fourth one. You notice that I'm not giving you time to write because I'm taking more time to explain. Do you see that? We have to find a balance. I can't do both. All right, let's read. Is this the fifth one? What's the fourth? Oh, the fifth one, okay. Tennis. You know how tennis is played, right? Toss the ball up and smash. That's how you serve. So a player hits the ball when its velocity is zero. That's almost correct because, you know, the ball is tossed up. What's the velocity at the highest point? Mm -hmm. That's when the, the racket smashes it, right? Okay, so see that. The racket exerts a force of 540 newtons on the ball for five, what is that? Milli. Milli. What's milli? Yes, 10 to the negative 3. Milli is 1 by 1,000. Because the time of contact is so small, it goes. So 5 milliseconds, giving it a final velocity of 45 meter per second. Using these data, find the mass of the ball. All for you, go. Form a plan. Didn't we do the same thing? Which comes down to forces, mass, times acceleration? Of course, it's the same thing. And there are two equations for impulse. What are they? Force multiplied by time is equal to? Yeah. Mass times change in velocity. Done. Problem done. F times delta T is equal to M times the change in velocity. Force is 540 times milliseconds. So that's why you have 10 to the negative 3, okay? 5 times 10 to the negative 3, which means it's divided by 1,000. It's equal to, we do not know the mass. Final velocity is 45, initial is 0. Just be careful about the calculations. And after you get the answer, you have to look at it. You're going to get the answer in what units? Somebody tell me. Kilograms. So you look at it and say, hmm, 0 0.060 kilograms. That's how many grams? Six. Yeah. 60. Yeah, 60. 60 grams. And then you look at, yes, that sounds right, isn't it? 60 grams. You should know what you are talking about. If you get 600 grams, hmm. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Or you get six kilograms, mass of a tennis ball, and then you, uh -uh. <laughs> you have to look at it. Look at the final answer. Most of the time you can catch your mistakes. Okay, that takes us to number six. Go on. Let's see how far we can go. Now it's into boxing. Wow. Riding a car, problem three, cruise ship, four, Serving a tennis ball, five. Boxing, six. All this is real life. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And these are true numbers. It's not like made up numbers. It's all true. Correct. Let's read it. Boxing is a dangerous sport. Because you can see the opponent is hit with 1,000 newtons. A horizontal blow that lasts for 0 0.150 seconds. Calculate the impulse. <laughs> That's easy, isn't it? Impulse, product of force and time. You already got the plan. What is the opponent's final velocity? Hmm. If his mass is 105 kilogram and he is motionless in midair when struck near <laughs> his center of mass. I'm going to explain what center of mass is after this problem. But you don't need that here. 
And then the C part says calculate the recoil velocity of the opponent's 10 kilogram head. <laughs> you know what recoil is? What will happen to his head? When his head is hit, what will happen to it? It will go, go backwards, isn't it? So you have to find the velocity with which it begins to move backwards. That's the entire problem. And then finally you have to discuss the implications of your answers for part B and C. Let's go. Okay, the A part, impulse, is the product of force and time. One thousand times point one five. Point one five zero actually gives you one hundred and fifty newton second. And B, you're asked to find the final velocity. Impulse is also change in momentum, so we already got the impulse. Mass is one hundred and five. Looking for final velocity. Did you get it as 150 divided by 105, which is 1.43 meter per second? Okay. Right? C? Anybody got the C part? Let me hear your answer before I give it to you. Nobody got it? Its impulse is change in momentum. Impulse is the same. Did you notice that is the most important thing? Did you notice that? Impulse is the same, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, but the mass is now different. It's the mass of the opponent's head. That's why the velocity is going to be higher. That guy is going to struggle because his final velocity is 15 meter per second. Woo! Look at that difference, this is. So the head is running the ball? The head, <laughs> yeah, that's why there is a chance of the neck snapping. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's why boxing is dangerous, because if your head goes, that's exactly why you have your head support in your car seat. Haven't you seen that yet? Otherwise, it's called, it's called whiplash error. Do you know that? <laughs> whiplash error. It's called whiplash. Because if your car suddenly stops, what's going to happen to your head? Spinal cord broken, paralyzed. But they also build the new seats now so that they fall back. It's like a tanker's mate. Head recoils faster since the mass is smaller, right? Isn't that the last problem? If you compare the velocities, you see that that was 1.43, but the head was moving at 15. So it was really much higher. All right, in this question, look, principle of conservation of momentum. Did we write a formula like that at least one time? We did. Okay. So 900 times 30, that's the momentum of the car plus the initial momentum of the deer is equal to 900 plus 150 because of what I told you a million times. They are stuck together. And when you do that, you get 27.4 meter per second. Yeah. Is that the answer? Mm -hmm. Yes. And remember that, see, the V1 prime and the V2 prime both became the same, right? That's why I put it as V prime. Which is, if you want to write, you can write it as Vf. Whatever you write doesn't make any difference, as long as you understand. Kinetic yeah. energy transfers yeah. to potential energy. Uh -uh. It's about kinetic energy, yeah. The total kinetic energy is conserved. That means the total kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the total kinetic energy oh, after no the collision. Yeah, there is no loss of kinetic energy. That, that makes sense? So if you see the word elastic collision, 
momentum is already conserved, right? On top of that, kinetic energy is also conserved. How would you write that equation for conservation of kinetic energy? It would be one half m one v one squared plus half m two v two squared, right? Yeah. Isn't that the total kinetic energy? It should be mm -hmm. one half m one v one prime squared plus one half m two v two prime squared. The formula for kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. That's all I did. I just put the kinetic energy of both before collision, added them. So don't try to cram equations. Just understand. It's not so tough. Hmm. How do you do it? All right, in this question, you can apply the conservation of momentum. But wait a minute, where's one term? Where is one term? Where's M2 V2? <laughs> yes. Why? Because there is inverse, yeah. So I already just treated it as zero, okay? That's why you don't see it, right? So I'm just making the mass, the subject there. That's just math. But that is conservation of momentum. Second one, what is that? That is conservation of kinetic energy, isn't it? Where's the second term again? Well, same thing. Isn't V2 zero? So that's why you don't see that term, OK? That's my second equation. I did not use the shortcut that I gave you in this case, right? But you can use it. I cancel the halves. Let me explain. Don't just write. See, I brought this term to the other side, didn't I? Wouldn't it become minus? Do you see this coming over to the left side? That's why it's minus. Both have m1, so I took it out. All right, and this term is still on the right side. Does that make sense? And then, does anybody know that in math you can split this or break this? a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. Anybody remembers that? No. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I split that. Okay, the right side, I'm not doing anything on the right side, same. So I got my two equations now. Take a look at, that's my equation one, if you know. You see that? Yeah. I got that from conservation of momentum. I got two from conservation of kinetic energy, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to divide this equation by this. Why? Because I know if I divide, the mass will get cancelled on the left side and also on the right side, if I divide. The masses will go off, so I'm going to divide. What? Watch. I'm dividing this equation to, look at the left-hand side. Do you see the left-hand side here? I'm going to divide that by this. What will happen when I divide? The mass will get cancelled. Also, this will get cancelled with this. And I'll only have this term. I was trying to just derive the simple formula that I gave you. Let, let me stop. You did not do all this on the exam. What I did now is I gave you that formula that I showed you. I don't know whether you understood. You see this formula that I told you? I just derived it. Watch. Look at that. Look at the last one. I've not completed it. Isn't it the same? Except that V2 is... Zero in this case. Open your eyes and check. So you need not do all these because you can go straight into this and apply it. Okay. Don't try to derive all that. I just, I just wanted to show off. I did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you would get V1 prime. You would also get V2 prime. Got two equations, solve them. You get 
B1 prime is negative 34.9. What does the negative show? Opposite direction, okay. And V2 prime would be zero point one five zero meter per second. Okay, now what I want you to do is do it the way I told you to do it. Let's take time for that. All right, in this question we have a seventy kilogram ice hockey goalie originally at rest catches a point one five zero kilogram hockey puck slapped at him at a velocity of 35 meter per second. Suppose the goalie and the ice puck have an initial elastic collision and the puck is reflected back in the direction from which it came. What would their final velocities be in this case? Now what is so special about this question is that it is an elastic collision. And so there is conservation of kinetic energy in this case the total kinetic energy before collision is equal to the total kinetic energy after collision because it is an elastic collision now that gives us a special equation that you can only use if it is an elastic collision but we do know that momentum is always conserved so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime but in addition to that because it's an elastic collision kinetic energy is also conserved that's why you have the kinetic energy before total kinetic energy before is equal to the total kinetic energy after the halves get cancelled and you can simplify these two equations to get a very important special equation which is equation number two remember that you can use this equation only if it's an elastic collision and I have not derived it but we can easily get it using these two equations so now you have equation one and two using which we can find the answers 70 kilogram uh, but the hockey, uh, hockey goalie is at rest so that's why the velocity is zero and that's the mass of the puck velocity and then we do not know their velocities after collision so v1 prime v2 prime both unknown when you multiply these two numbers you get 5.25 so that gives us an equation now substituting into this one and then rearranging to make v2 prime the subject you get v2 prime is v1 prime minus 35 so we can put that back into this equation in place of v2 prime you can write v1 prime minus 35 there you go so this equation only has v1 prime which we can solve I have distributed this these two terms and uh, taken negative 5.25 to the other side so there's already one 5.25 here so that's why you have two of them and then you have v1 prime as 0 0.15 meter per second substitute it into this equation and you will get v2 prime as negative 34.85 meter per second in uh, this question we have a 0 0.240 kilogram billiard ball that is moving at 3 meter per second strikes the bumper of a pool table and bounces straight back at 2.40 meter per second which is 80 percent of its original speed the collision lasts 
0 0.0150 seconds. Calculate the average force exerted on the ball by the bumper. And B, how much kinetic energy in joules is lost during the collision. C, what percentage of the original energy is left. Okay, we have this collision between the billiard ball and the bumper now. Of course, the bumper table is at rest both before and after the collision. Net force is given by change in momentum divided by time, which gives us mass times change in velocity because momentum is mass times velocity. So in fact that is net force is mass times acceleration which is what we have here. Mass is 0 0.240 I thought it's 0 0.240. Okay, this is this is supposed to be 0 0.240. And then why is this velocity negative? Because it's coming right back. So the initial velocity is taken as positive and uh, the final is negative. And this negative is uh, is already in the equation. Okay? And uh, you have the time of collision here which gives us negative 86.4 Newton. In the B part change in the kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy take away the initial kinetic energy And uh, one half times the mass is common, so it's taken outside. 0 0.240, that's what it is, divided by 2. And then the final velocity, negative 0 0.2, 2.40, and the initial. When you calculate that, you get negative 0.389 joules. So that is the energy lost. And how do we know? Because it's negative. And the C part, what percent of the energy is left? The initial kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the initial velocity, which was 3.00. And you get it as 1.08 joules. And uh, therefore, the percentage of the kinetic energy left is 1.08 minus 0.389. That's what is lost, divided by the original times 100. Gives 64% of the kinetic energy is remaining. The tenth question. A 3,000 kilogram cannon is mounted so that it can recoil only in the horizontal direction. Calculate its recoil velocity when it fires a 15 kilogram shell at 480 meter per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal. And B, what is the kinetic energy of the cannon? This energy is dissipated as a heat transfer in shock absorbers that stop its recoil. What happens to the vertical component of momentum that's imparted to the cannon when it is fired? Part A calculated recoil velocity. Uh, initially, remember that both of them are not moving, the shell and the cannon. So when we consider the conservation of momentum along the x-axis, the total initial momentum should be equal to the total final momentum.
but the final momentum has two components the component along the x-axis would be the cost factor and the component along the vertical component would be I mean the component along the vertical would be the sign factor but since we are only looking at the x-axis now we have the cost function here and rearrange it to make velocity the subject that's 15 that's mass of the shell here 2 is the shell of course and 1 is the cannon so we have mass of the shell times the velocity with which the shell is fired cosine of the angle divided by the mass of the cannon because the ones represent the cannon and two represents the shell on calculation you get minus 2.26 meter per second that's the recall velocity now the B part the kinetic energy of the cannon is one half times its mass times the square of the velocity which is one half times 3000 times uh, its velocity which we just got now minus two point that's the exact value and I forgot to put a square there so it's supposed to be squared now I remembered so that's 7.63 times 10 to the power 3 joules the Part C says what happens to the vertical component of momentum. Yes, the vertical component of the momentum. The ground exerts a normal force because it's pushing down on the ground. The ground would exert a normal force which is at right angles to the ground straight up in the vertical direction and therefore the momentum in the vertical direction is transferred to the to the ground the ground simply absorbs the vertical component of the momentum Uh, the eleventh question talks about two cars colliding at an intersection and sticking together afterward. The first car has a mass of 1200 kilogram approaching at 8 meter per second due south. Second has a mass of 850 kilogram and is approaching 7 meter, 17 meter per second due west. Calculate the final velocity which is the magnitude and direction of the cars and B how much kinetic energy is lost in the collation really need to have a diagram for this one is moving due south the other is moving due west so that's the diagram the car moving due south the second one moving due west and of course this is the resultant of the two and assuming that the resultant makes an angle theta with the horizontal this is m1 this is m2 and their velocities are 8 and 17 and the resultant is going to give us the final velocity So, momentum P1, P2, and P3. Now, I realize I should have called this P2 because that's M2 that's the second object so that is P2 this is P1 
and the resultant you see is P3 which is along this direction P3 now considering the conservation of momentum and uh, taking the component along the vertical direction because if you have this as the momentum you can resolve it into this would be the horizontal component which would be cos theta and the vertical would be sine theta Where do we get that from? Because you can see from the diagram that M1, B1, that is going to give you the vertical component, but M2, V2 gives us the horizontal component. That's why these two equations are written. So one is for the conservation of momentum along the y-axis, second one for the conservation of momentum along the x-axis. And if you divide the two equations, you will get tan theta is equal to m1v1 by m2v2 because these terms will get cancelled. Sine by cos is tan. Now all we have to do is plug in the numbers. When you take the inverse of that, you get 33.6 degrees. Since we now have theta, we can substitute it back into this equation and find the final velocity. I have made the final velocity the subject. In the denominator, you have m1 plus m2 sine 33.6, which is what we got here. Uh, that gives us 8.462 meter per second. B part, how much kinetic energy is lost in the collision? Find the initial, find the final, and find the difference between the two. So that's on the left side the total initial kinetic energy okay one six one two two five joules and then find the final kinetic energy in the same way This time they are sticking together, so I have added the masses. Uh, uh, the, it must be squared there. Vf squared, which I have not written, but I have used it in the calculation. And find the difference between them. Minus 8.78 times 10 to the 4 joules is the kinetic energy lost. Brings us to the last question in this chapter. A thin block of soft wood with a mass of uh, 0 0.072 kilogram rests on a horizontal frictionless surface. A bullet with a mass of 4.67 gram is fired with a speed of 621 meter per second at the block of wood and it passes completely through it. The speed of the block is 25 meter per second immediately after the bullet exits the block. Determine the speed of the bullet 
as it exits the block. Simple case of conservation of momentum. Mass of the block. Velocity initially is zero because it's just sitting there. Mass of the bullet. It's in grams, so I've changed it into kilograms, dividing it by 1,000. And the initial velocity of the bullet is 621. Final velocity of the block is given 25 meter per second, and you've got to find the final velocity of the bullet. That is conservation of momentum. First term is going to become zero because the velocity is zero there. This number turns out to be 2.9, this is 1.8, that's 2.9 minus 1.8 and uh, you get 235 meter per second. So those are the 12 questions in this uh, problem set and some of them were recorded in the class and some of them at, uh, at home so you find the difference in tone which uh, is not a big thing as long as you understand the problem. So good luck.